my name is Professor Cathy Thornton and I'm Deputy Head of the Medical School here at Swansea University and I'm just going to give you a little overview about the Medical School, about the University more widely and a little bit about Swansea itself to help you with your decision making processes over the coming weeks. So what we do at Swansea University is obviously many of you here today are interested in becoming doctors but we don't just train doctors, we train other health professionals such as physician associates and we train life scientists and we use an approach across all of these programs that spans the basic scientists through health and social care and ensuring a contribution to the knowledge economy in Wales and the wider world. So what some of you will be wondering about, you may not have heard of Swansea University Medical School until you started doing a bit of investigation. So you're wondering if Swansea University Medical School is any good. Well, I can assure you that it is. You can see that we're the top medical school in Wales and we're ranked seventh, seventh in the UK, according to the Guardian University Guide that has recently come out. Much of our teaching activity in the medical school is underpinned by research. And we also have an excellent research environment. We're first in the UK for the research environment when it was formally assessed for the 2014-2021 period and our research quality is ranked second in the UK as well. And we're going to talk today about some of the pathway programs that we have available for those interested in doing medicine and one of those is our genetics degree and you can see on the right of the slide there that our genetics program is ranked second in the UK overall for student satisfaction. So that's the medical school. What about the university? Well, the university is a top 25 UK institution, as you'll see in the nice green square there. And in the right square, perhaps more importantly, are the accolades from the students. This is what the students say about Swansea University. They say that our teaching is excellent. You can see the TEF gold offering there. And the students are very satisfied with the, with the experience they get in, in Swansea, both the teaching and learning experience, but the wider experience. And many of them come out with fabulous career prospects and are very satisfied with the courses that they have done that take them to their futures. Um, so we've added this slide because there'll be some of you who know exactly where Swansea is. There'll be some of you who've only found out where Swansea is because you've started investigating your options for the coming years. So you can see Swansea there highlighted in the map on green. We're in the, on the south coast of Wales there. So we're found in southwest Wales. We're the second largest city in Wales with a population of over 250,000 people. Um, the two seafront campuses, we have the Singleton campus where you would spend the bulk of your time if you're studying one of our pathway programs. I'm on the edge of the Gow we're on the edge of the Gower Peninsula, which was the UK's first area of outstanding natural beauty. Some of you may have noticed from my twang that I'm an Australian, and of course Australia is full of spectacular scenery, and I can assure you that Swansea and the Gower and many parts of Wales um, rival parts of Australia in places to go to enjoy the seaside and to enjoy the outdoors and to enjoy beautiful scenery as well. You can see down the middle, though, though, sometimes Swansea may seem like it's a long way from anywhere. It's less than an hour from Cardiff. It's less than three hours from London. And that's a direct train, which I think is quite important. And it's a four hour uh, car drive from somewhere like Manchester, for example. So we sit in a stunning area of outstanding natural beauty in a thriving city on the seaside. And it truly is a functioning seaside where you can go and enjoy it. This is telling us a little bit about what Swansea is like as a city. It truly is on the sea. You can leave Singleton campus, you can cross the road across a pedestrian bridge, you land on the promenade, which is full of joggers and pedestrians and bike riders, and then a few more steps and you're actually on the beach. And you can see some examples of that. And both campuses are on the, on the beach side. And we are the, I think across the world, we're the university that's ranked closest to the seaside as well. And you'll see highlighted in the, in the blue box there, not only is Swansea a fantastic place to live, it's deemed the third most affordable uh, place to live in the UK for students. And so that's a really important consideration as well. Okay, so we're here today to think about the opportunities that we have in Swansea to study graduate entry medicine. So as a graduate entry medical student, you will need a previous degree. So you will need an undergraduate degree. So what are the undergraduate degrees you can actually study at Swansea University? We can see on the list here that we have an applied medical sciences program. We offer biochemistry, medical biochemistry, genetics and medical genetics in various combinations. We also offer medical pharmacology. We have a population health and medical sciences degree. And new for the 2021 academic year, we will be offering pharmacy as well. 
All of our undergraduate programs have a foundation year, which we'll highlight on an upcoming slide. And our genetics and medical genetics program, our genetics and biochemistry programs, sorry, all have MSI options with a fourth year of intense laboratory work. For graduate entry medicine, you require a 2 1 on your undergraduate program to be considered for that program. And you'll hear more about that from Promote later. So if you're thinking about becoming a doctor, you can think about doing graduate entry medicine. So we have a graduate entry medicine program, which not only is the top medical school in, offered in the top medical school in Wales, is a unique program in that it is an accelerated four year medical degree. And you get incredibly early clinical exposure, which I'll highlight in an upcoming slide, very much a case-based learning approach. And we use a spiral integrated curriculum to build knowledge year on year. You can see here a summary of the entry requirements. As I've said, you need a 2-1 undergraduate degree or equivalent. You can have a 2-2 undergraduate degree plus a postgraduate degree. You need to do one of the exams that I think many of you will be becoming familiar with as you explore this. You can do a GAMSAT or an MCAT. And you've got to meet certain levels of, of criteria for each of those. And then you'll be invited to an interview for our graduate entry program. So there are a lot of benefits for studying medicine at the graduate level. Obviously, you'll be a little bit older, potentially a little bit wiser. You'll have a little bit more life experience. You'll have been to university before and know about how you would best approach study and the university wider experience as well. You'll have some additional qualifications with your first degree. So this opens up your career options, perhaps alternatives to medicine because you have a, a sea change as you go through the degree or more opportunities after you complete the study of medicine as well. You'll have a rich study environment. You'll have colleagues who have varied academic backgrounds and experiences. We have people on our program who not only come from the sciences, we have people who come from theology and physics and business. So a very diverse range of backgrounds you will find in the program. And there's a lot of studies showing that postgraduate medicine or graduate entry medical doctors are the best prepared doctors on completion. And there's a little example on the right there, suggesting that the experience and maturity you bring into the degree program actually will make you a much better doctor at the end of the day. So this is just going to tell you a little bit more about our graduate entry medicine program. We have the two phases. This is phase one, which is year one and year two, and then year three and year four, we consider phase two. So this is a learning week based approach and it's case based and it includes integrated clinical method. For example, I'm teaching on the upcoming week to our first years and the week is entitled Swollen Finger. I'm a basic scientist. I will give a lecture telling you about the basic processes of immunology and inflammation. And then there'll be some other lectures over that day telling you about the kind of hematological tests that may be done to evaluate a patient. And that will be from one of our clinicians working in that area. And there'll be another, another presentation from a clinician who in this case is a rheumatologist. And we'll talk about why the finger may be swollen and how we would go about investigating that. You get some community-based learning um, opportunities as well. And these are every fourth to fifth week. And we have these things that we call locks or learning opportunities in the clinical setting. And then you will start doing clinical apprenticeships very early on during the program. In the second phase in year three and four, you'll get the opportunity to do some clinical apprenticeships. We have intermediate apprenticeships, which are three weeks long. And then there's some junior assistant sh assistantships you get to do these in medicine, surgery, and primary care. Then in year three, you can have the community-based learning as one of your intermediate apprenticeships. And there's the opportunity for special attachments and then electives at the end of year four. And by the end of this, you progress to a senior assistantship. And there you're going to get to shadow an already working F1 doctor so that you can get a real life experience of what it's going to be like when you yourself are very soon an F1 doctor. And you can see some examples down the right of the activities you might do. There's some uh, activity in our clinical suite. And uh, we have an exchange with Gambia, which is the other slide there. And you may have the opportunity, of course, depending on current circumstances, to go and do an elective in countries like there. So this is just showing you the curriculum map over the first, uh, over the four years. You can see one, two, three, four, down the left side of the slide, looking at each of the, of each of the years. And the key thing there for you at the moment is to look at that line that row across from number one and you can see the clinical apprenticeship occurs very early in your first year so you're getting good clinical contact from right at the beginning of your medical degree which is one of the the real bonuses of studying graduate entry medicine at swansea university 
So you're going to hear a bit today about how you get into graduate entry medicine. As I've already said, you need a first degree and that will be an undergraduate degree program at Swan University, for example. And we have a number of BSc degrees that we consider part of our Pathways to Medicine offering. As I said, we have applied medical sciences, medical biochemistry, medical genetics, medical pharmacology, and population health and medical sciences. And if you perform satisfactorily in this degree program and you meet the minimum entry criteria at the time of application, which also includes your GAMSAT score, you'll be guaranteed an interview for this program. And so when you're thinking about filling in your UCAS form, if you're applying for undergraduate medicine elsewhere, you can fill the first four places with your options there, but consider taking your fifth place and putting one of our Pathways to Medicine programs to give you that opportunity to perhaps do graduate entry medicine here in the future. I'm just going to share this video with you and then I will return to you after it has played. Worked before. Pathway to Medicine is the structure that exists within some of our BSc programs. It's for students who want a guaranteed interview for our Graduate Entry Medicine program, but are keeping their options open, possibly as a fifth choice in their UCAS form when they're applying for undergraduate medicine, or they know that they want to do a first degree before they apply to Graduate Entry Medicine. Mostly medical sciences type degrees for students who want to explore their passion for medicine. There are a range of other career options which our graduates go on to, but there is that pathway there for those students who want them. The Pathways to Medicine courses uh, are an excellent foundation for going into graduate entry medicine because and to get a little taste of what it's to a great backup choice if like me you don't get into medicine the first um, it gives you a chance uh, to apply through your fifth choice um, and do some long run. Um, it's a doctor and to work with patients every day, um, and that's invaluable. Okay, well, I hope everyone able to see that because I got the unstable internet message partway through that, so <laughs> hopefully it was okay. Yeah, we, we, we heard most of it, um, Cathy. However, if anyone wasn't able to with their internet, then um, that video is on the landing page that you came on to this morning. Okay, thanks, Emma. So just a brief uh, overview of how the medicine, how the Pathways to Medicine works, because you're going to hear more from Pramod later. Um, you can choose one of our five Pathways to Medicine BSc degrees, which you saw in the video, and which was in one of the preceding slides. And part of those all of those pathway degrees have a particular module that is going to help you understand what the process is for working as a doctor and proceeding through your application and interview stage. So we have a bespoke module which is offered across all of those programs called Doctors, Patients and the Goals of Medicine. We have healthcare related placements which are offered to the students on this pathway. And as I said, there'll be advice on preparing medicine application and you're in for your interview. And you'll see the example here today with Gloria, who's done our Pathways to Medicine undergraduate degree, progressed to GEM. So you will have access to the students who would be taking a similar path to you, who can give you some personal insights into the, the, the route that they have taken. You need to gain a 60% average overall for your degree and 60% in the Pathways module. You need to sit the GAMSAT and you typically do that at the end of year two or the beginning of year three. As an academic mentor, I have a number of my students now who are furiously, uh, furiously studying for this and going to be sitting it uh, fairly soon. And if you do uh, sufficiently well in all of those, you'll gain a guaranteed interview for graduate entry medicine at Swansea with that minimum GAMSAT score. And the BSc degree from Swansea or elsewhere needs to be at the 2-1 stage, as 2-1 level or above. And that will take you to an interview and then hopefully on to studying graduate entry medicine here in Swansea. These are just to remind you of what our pathways to medicine degrees are, the applied medical sciences, the medical biochemistry, medical genetics, medical pharmacology, 
population health and medical sciences. And all of these programs now also have a foundation year and you can progress from the foundation year. If you do sufficiently well with that, you can progress to the, the standard undergraduate program and still have the pathways to medicine option available to you. There's a note on there that the modules may vary from year to year, but of course the pathways module, while the content may change, the opportunity remains the same. So basically what you'll be doing when you study those pathways to medicines degrees is you'll be doing a degree that is the study of the science that underpins medicine and you'll be able to focus on your particular area of interest. As I said, there's a number of core modules and these will be around the area of cell biology, microbiology, genetics, biochemistry and biostatistics, all skills that would suit you for the future study of medicine or any other career opportunity you may wish to pursue. So what is the typical offer we make, it stu make to students for our undergraduate degrees uh, in the medical school where we have AAB to BBB at A level or equivalent uh, being the likely offer that you would get. Um, most students would have relevant subjects being biology and or chemistry and one other STEM, STEM subject. And we have the examples of maths, physics and psychology up there. But you may have seen with the recent A-level results and clearing that Swans University was particularly recognised for the fact that we take a fairly individual approach to the students and we will look at your different circumstances, reading, read your UCAS personal statement and references and maybe have a conversation with you about what your aspirations and challenges may have been and uh, we will consider bespoke offerings based on a student by student basis. So what career might I be qualified for after I've done my undergraduate degree at Swansea University? Obviously, some of you will progress to doing uh, graduate entry medicine and progress to being doctors, but the degree itself opens up a whole pile of opportunities that um, many of you may not have even thought about and will discover whilst you're studying that degree program. In the dark blue on the left, you see the sort of more traditional ones that many of you may be thinking about, obviously into the health professions, doctors, physicians, associates, dentists, etc. But there's opportunities around health, informatics, pharmaceutical regulation, working in research and development in pharmaceutical and other industries, perhaps becoming a clinical scientist in a, in a hospital, for example, or working in academia and becoming a teacher and researcher in that setting. And you'll see in the, in the other two boxes of different shades of blue, some other degree opportunities that you may not have thought about yet. Something, for example, is patent law, and so the opportunity may be that you become very interested in bio entrepreneurship and after a little bit more training, you could become a patent lawyer. I have some students who have done our undergraduate program with us, progressed to a PhD and have become teachers. And they're now fabulous science teachers back in schools working with GCSE and A student, A level students to give them the opportunities that you're looking at today. And we can see other opportunities around scientific publication and scientific writing. And those skills will start to be honed during our degree programs. Obviously, when we're going, thinking about going to university, there's the consideration around funding. And there's always the question of, can you get any extra funding? And we do offer scholarships and bursaries, and we reward, we reward academic success. So we have excellent scholarships for students who have three A's at A level, and that's 3,000 pounds paid over three years. Merit scholarships for AAB at A level, and this is 2,000 pounds paid over the three years. And then we have income related bursaries dependent on household income and opportunities for those who may be taking Welsh medium provision, which is available in some of our modules. So we're also going to hear this morning from Promote, who's going to talk about pathways to medicine module in particular. And then you're going to hear from Gloria Prince, who, as I've already said, was one of our undergraduate students and is now on our pathways to medicine and she will have some potentially most useful insights for you today. Then we have a question answer session at the end. So um, you should be able to pl uh, put any questions you have into the question answer box and we should be looking at the answers to those at the end of the session. So just to remind you when you're putting your medical school UCAS application in to think about using that fifth place for one of our graduate entry, uh, sorry, one of our undergraduate pathway to medicine opportunities um, that you can use to, incre to increase your opportunity to, prog to progress to studying medicine. So don't waste your fifth choice on putting another medical school for undergraduate medicine. Think about the opportunity to progress to graduate entry medicine after a pathways to medicine degree by choosing one of the degrees that we're talking to you about here today.
There's a lot more detail about all of those programs on our course pages. And we have a number of upcoming virtual open days where you can find out more about them. Of course, it would be lovely if we could have you in at the campus and show you around the facilities and you could start meeting some of the people who are going to be teaching you and some of the other students. But of course, that's uh, not possible at the time. And the virtual open days have proved very popular and incredibly successful. So really just any questions you can ask today, but if you finish today and you've got more questions, there are plenty of ways that you can get a question to us. And here are just some examples on this slide. So I'm just gonna stop sharing my screen. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you, Professor Thornton. That was really informative. So um, as uh, Cathy said, so that was our introduction, bit of an overview of graduate entry medicine and the pathways to medicine opportunities that we have here in Swansea. Okay, so thank you, Cathy. We really appreciate it. And the questions have been coming in, which is great. Some of which we've been able to answer as the presentation's been going on. Okay, but so please do encourage our attendees today to pop those questions in the Q&A. Okay, so next I'd like to introduce uh, Professor Pramod Vanabelli. So uh, thank you for joining us today. Um, Pramod is now going to go into a little bit more detail about the Pathways to Medicine module and how that helps prepare our undergraduate students to progress onto graduate entry medicine. Over to you, Pramod. Thank you, Emma. Um, what a pleasure to be here this afternoon and uh, thank you Cathy for a very comprehensive overview and uh, opportunity for me to share exactly about uh, further information about this module. So this um, module is unique in many perspectives. I think you know when you read the information about it once you met the qualifying criteria uh, but what I would like to point out is at the heart of it this module will talk to you about patients and also um, as a consultant pediatrician uh, here in Marston Hospital in Swansea, we've always uh, looked at the module in a way that we give you an interface of what exactly you will be facing when you become, uh, if you go through the program and you qualify to become a doctor, um, what exactly you'd be dealing with. So we want to give you an overview, which is real, which is um, live, which is contemporary to the current day and age. But also, it's not just uniquely about the patients. The module also covers the societal values that we'll be working with and what the society expects us to do for our patients. But then interlinking all of these aspects is becoming a doctor and what life is as a doctor. So I, I really want to stress upon the uniqueness of this module is as the module's title stands for, um, doctors, patients, and the goals of medicine. What is our eventual goal? And whilst you come through the Pathways program from varied backgrounds, you might be thinking, is this module really for us? You know, is this module uh, something that I could go through? And what you'd be um, interested to know is it's not talking to you too much about the technicalities of what it means to be a doctor, to look after your patients. What the module talks to you is in each of those perspectives, when you talk about doctors, we want to um, brief you about the pathway. How do you become a doctor? Or what's the process as Cathy was talking to you about our GEM program. Um, but also if you were to think of other career pathways after you qualify, what else you could aspire to do? So uh, very early on in the module, we are talking about the pathway and in terms of finishing towards your training. Progression is not just about becoming a junior doctor. What do you do after? How does your career look like after you've qualified in a year or two or five years? We talk to you all about regulating bodies, specifically the General Medical Council here in the UK, and also from an international perspective, because we do realize our students come from a variety of backgrounds. You may or may not be practicing in the UK in the future. But also uh, it is a good opportunity to talk about what should a good doctor really look like? You know, what are the qualities of a good doctor? And we base um, our lectures, not just upon um, you know, a didactic way of teaching with PowerPoint. We involve a lot of discussions. We had a unique um, interaction with our students. We really emphasize on engagement and also you know, sharing 
what a bad doctor could be looking like. You know, issues about communication, issues about professionalism, issues about interacting with your patients. So the module goes through each of these aspects in varied formats through lectures, through engaging discussions, and also mini workshops going through unique case problems. But then what is the one key goal that you'd want to do medicine and you want to qualify as a doctor? And there's no denying there is one key aspect there is our patients. So what we talk about again in this module, giving unique perspectives about, you know, patients have rights, but then also, if you were to practice as a doctor, what are the ethical principles that we need to follow? Who decides what is right? Who decides what morals are? Who decides what the right values are? So you might be thinking, hang on, if I do this module, are we getting into the nitty gritty of ethics? And But the reason behind having these topics in the module is if you were to be offered an uh, interview to go and, you know, for a graduate entry medicine program, we want you to be prepared with a background that you could talk about with um, some degree of awareness about the ethical principles that you might be questioned about in interviews. How should patients have relationship with doctors? I mean, it is an evolving world in terms of the unique challenges that we live in with the modern tech, with the modern social media communications. So how do patients expect to have relationship with doctors? And it might not sometimes be all smooth sailing. So what kind of conflicts might appear between patients and doctors? And then also, is trust a unique thing to this profession that we're going to follow, that we're going to practice? And how might it be blurred in between the lines? But then also remembering it's not only doctors, it's not only patients, there are some constraints which affect practicing medicine. You could talk about money, finances. How do these control what you do? What, why is it important? You might be coming from applied medical sciences, from genetics, from pharmacology backgrounds into this module. What is the importance of following evidence-based medicine? Why should we follow evidence? So we go into some aspects in discussion about societal values. How does the society govern what you do as a doctor? But then it's not just about societal values. You might have your own personal beliefs, but in this combination of what the society expects you to do, your personal beliefs, ethics, and the lines that could be easily blurred. So we give an overview in the module about what is the expectation overall that we've come to an agreement. But then also uh, we brought some really unique new aspects into the module about science and technology. How is it really influencing the current way we practice medicine? And you know, some examples where it could be really well used, some examples where perhaps it has not been really well used. So all of these points come up as key elements of the module. But the module just doesn't cover those. The module is also geared towards you as a student complying from various backgrounds coming into this module, we want to help you with your personal statements. Your personal statements for applying when you're preparing your applications. We want to give you an overview of what an ideal personal statement could look like, but also share the point that it is a personal statement that is unique about you and it couldn't be too prescriptive. The module will also help you with some new elements that we've introduced about helping our students at the interviews. What is expected, how to prepare for it, what would be the right way of preparing for it. The module will also give you various views about career paths. So we will have students who've done our program coming and sharing with you how they've now ended up their careers in. Some may be doctors, some may not be doctors. Uh, we get nursing colleagues to come and talk to you. We get allied health professional colleagues to come and talk to you because we want you to really understand medicine is not just about being a unique, about being a doctor, but about the team, the interprofessional working that you'd be doing. We also um, 
help you to have a placement. And again, in the current form and climate that we're in, we're also preparing to offer you virtual placements when you come through the module. So you will be seeing an interaction between a doctor and a patient, which is real and which is live. But also the module is about offering you the pastoral support where you know you may be and the emails that I exchange with our module students is often this question is medicine for you or not for you you know if you're not sure if you have any dilemma we, we do help you through with those discussions and put you in touch with um, people who can help you but uh, it's not just me telling you what the module is like. I just want to share some examples of what students give us in terms of feedback. Uh, they really enjoyed our style of teaching is not just PowerPoint based. We have a whole lot of engagement methods that we get you to talk to us and also deliver the key principles. Our students have often commented that um, they found the module quite uh, stimulating, not just um, talking about, you know, if they were to choose at the end of the module that they weren't going to apply for medicine, uh, they did benefit from having these discussions about doctors, patients, and the values that we talked about of even in future, how they would find them really helpful and useful. Some of them have been very clear of how uh, useful it was for them about graduate entry medicine. And also in terms of having those discussions about them as a person in the module, i.e. with their personal statements, with their interview practice. And, you know, though um, in the current climate that we are in the UK, some of it has been restricted, but we, we are going to do it virtually as well. So in, in summary, what I had to tell you about the module is it's quite unique in every way you look at it. It is a great opportunity, even if you weren't to pursue your career as a graduate entry medicine student, you could use the information in the module for your own career paths, as um, Kathy was sharing earlier, that you know, if you don't end up as a graduate entry medical student, if you were to go away and do any other professions with health professionals, this module will give you key perspectives of what could be really useful. And also, uh, it's truly, truly, when it says a pathway, and I wanted to end by saying that is, it is a condo. It will help you navigate your journey if you're not sure, if you're not, um, you know, specifically looking at graduate entry medicine. It does give you that interface, and it really is a stepping stone for you to come in, enjoy the module, and, you know, go away with the principles that you've learned. And if you have any further questions, um, I'd be happy to take them um, as Emma guides us. But thank you for having me today. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Pramod. It was really informative. So, um, and probably one of the first times we, it was part of our open day, actually, that we've actually gone into the Pathways to Medicine module in detail. So that was really helpful. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, so next we're joined by our current student, Gloria. So as we said, Gloria has done an undergraduate degree with us um, in Swansea and is now a medicine, a medical student. So I'll hand over to Gloria and she's going to share with you her first-hand experience of, uh, of at here with us at Swansea. Let me just get this presentation up. There we go. All right. Um, so, hi guys, I'm Gloria. I am now a second year medical student. So I did my undergrad in Swansea. I did applied medical sciences, which is one of the pathways to medicine courses. Um, I graduated, I graduated last year, first class, um, and now I'm studying medicine in Swansea um, in my second year now. So like the photos at the bottom are basically a timeline. So the first one is me during a, one of the uh, opportunities abroad that we had in applied medical sciences. The second photo is me at my graduation. And the third one is me last year trying out my stethoscope. So why I chose AMS? So originally I did want to do medicine in sixth form, but I didn't quite get the grade. So I thought I'd take a gap year instead, get some experience um, and then apply again. But then my UCAS tutor from sixth form emailed me and she told me about this course in Swansea, which gave me a guaranteed interview to medicine, um, provided I went through the pathways and also had opportunities abroad and um, had full body dissections in anatomy. And I was like, yes, sign me up straight away. So I applied to the clearing, um, visited the uni the next day, 
uh, I loved it. Like I, my course director was the one that showed me around the campus, um, talked to me about the course and she was lovely, so nice, so like um, enthusiastic about the course. Um, the, the day that we went, it was, it was beautiful. Like the, for, the, for, for the past week it's been like 22, 23 degrees, sunny, beautiful. And I accepted it straight away as soon as I get, came home. So this is what a typical week in first year of um, applied medical sciences look like. It's pretty much the same for most of the pathways to medicine courses like genetics, biochemistry and so on. So you, there, as you can see, there's quite a lot of white space. So it's not all like intense lectures, lectures, lectures. And we don't always start at 9 a.m. So if you ever feel like sleeping and you do have that opportunity. Um, but yeah, so every week we have, we cover like uh, different modules. So on Mondays and first year in, in the summer was anatomies, anatomy, and on Tuesdays we had practicals and then so on and so forth throughout the whole year. And then we had exams in January and also in May, June time. So the pathways to medicine module, um, as Dr. Valbeni was talking about, is the doctors, patients, and the goals of medicine module in second year. Um, I won't talk too much about it because you already talked about it, but um, at the time, at the, at the time when we were doing the module, um, I know a lot of people think I, I don't know what I was expecting from the module, but you know when you watch things like Grey's Anatomy and House, it's all like patients, pay, like you know, it's all investigations and cool things happening. But I think the Pathways to Medical Medicine module was great because it gave you more of a deeper insight on what the day-to-day -day life of a doctor is like, and um, more of the uh, the like the processes that a doctor has to go through, um, and in terms of like. To de and talking with patients, dealing with like um, in their professional capacity, in a research cap capacity, all of this kind of stuff. Um, and this pathway was certainly useful to me as a medicine applicant is because we got to attend a placement in a hospital. And one of the assessments for the module was that we had to write a reflective diary and an essay on uh, the what we encountered in the hospital. And I've highlighted the reflect upon patient encounters and observations because this was really, really useful to me when I was writing my personal statement and during interviews, because it was, I could, it's, it, there were things that I'd seen. And cause I was now in my, I was 19 at this point, 19, 20 at this point, um, there was more trust that the clinicians who were showing me around had in me. So um, they were, it was less like they were talking to uh, children excited, uh, shadowing and excited to learn about medicine more that we were adults and um, I think they were just more engaging with us because they I think they had more trust in us because we were now um, university students. Um, also we, one of the assessments for this module was that we had to do a presentation on what future practice might look like and this is this was great because we do a lot of presentations in like in life in general i've done so many presentations now at this point as a graduate and also as a medical student so there was a lot of um skills that i learned from doing this module especially the reflect, reflection like i really have to highlight this like in medicine we do so many reflections like after every single placement that we do we have to reflection on what we learned and i think learning the skill very early on was like was so helpful to me when I when I graduated and started doing medicine because we have quite a lot of early patient contact. So learning to reflect beforehand was something that was very useful. And of course, if you get 6% in this module, um, you get a guaranteed interview for medicine, which is how I ended up here. Um, also, uh, we have medicine workshops. So it's not just medicine workshops that the university runs. As medical students, we also run workshops for potential applicants as well. So you'll have a couple days uh, in the summer, no, um, during into like before interview prep time, so January-ish, um, where medical students will help you with your entrance tests, with personal statement writing. We'll do inter mock interviews for you. Um, so we'll have like MMI stations, which we run through, and you can come through it. You can come and do that. Um, also, your tutors, your academic tutors are incredibly helpful. I I, high, I highly recommend that you take advantage of them. Um, my tutor was extremely helpful with me when she when I was writing my first statement. She gave me my recommendation. She also helped me with my inter interview prep. She did mock interviews with me before my interviews. Um, yeah. Um, so what did I get from my course? So applied medical sciences was great because it was really broad. Like it covered a lot of the major um, scientific, like medical science topics, things like um, pharmacology, neuroscience, physiology, anatomy, genetics, biochemistry. We basically did everything. So um, when I graduated, I kind of knew what I liked and what I didn't really like. So um, 
when it came to my dissertation time and even now um, as a doctor we're kind of expected to do research I know what interests me and I know what I would be enthusiastic about researching um, so a comprehensive knowledge was definitely something that was a plus point opportunities broad so this photo is of me during a six-week internship in America where I was working in a research lab um, and that was one of the best things I've ever done I've also been to different parts of Asia with the university um, Swansea is great because it's got really good uh, global bursary um, and global links so if you are in, if you are if you're like me and you were interested in um, seeing what medicine or research is like abroad or even just being able to go abroad and, and experiencing different cultures um, definitely come here <laughs> Um, also, we, uh, we do a lot of med medical and professional ethics, so uh, quite a lot of our modules, a lot of it was like um, ethics based, we had psychology in, psychology in first and second year, we had ethics in third year as well, and I think all of this is really important because obviously being a doctor and even being a researcher is not all um, you work in a lab all day, you don't interact with anyone, there are lots of things to consider that you may not um, have thought about before, so it really like um, and it made me think about things I didn't really um, consider before, which I think is important. And obviously you gain lots of contacts in various fields from doing a dissertation, from um, just working in, with research people. All our lecturers were actual researchers. So if you were ever interested in anything that they were talking about in one of their lectures, all you had to do was email them and they would get back to you and be like, do you want to come into the lab for one day, see what we're doing? So I had a couple of friends who did that and they went on to do summer um, internships in, the, in these labs with an ILS and things like, which is one of our buildings in the medical school. And they went on to do the dissertations and some of them even went on to do their PhDs following on from like a simple email, email that they sent to a lecturer. So yeah, this makes it, um, a pathways to medicine courses are really good for that fifth choice. So now I'm doing medicine at Swansea. So why did I choose Swansea over any, all the other medical schools is because we have really early patient contact. So from October in first year, we start going to the GP clinic, to a GP clinic every month. Um, and so from October onwards, I was talking to patients by myself at like real patients. And I would present back to the GP who would then, and we would go through like the diagnosis and management together. We also have um, lots and lots of day placements available. So you don't have to do 500, but there are 500 opportunities. And they, these are in a range of different specialties like pediatric surgery, gastroenterology clinics. Um, you can ride along in an ambulance. You can go onto the labor ward. You can uh, see a cardiac surgery. You can take part in some um, anesthetics procedures. Um, and there's so, and if you, if you're like me and you don't really know what, what specialty you want to go into, this was really great for me because I tried my best to do a placement in every single major specialty. So when it came time for me to choose what, um, specialties I would like to do for my placements, um, I kind of had a good idea of what each, each specialty kind of entailed. Um, so this was great. Also, and I think this is unique to Swansea because I don't really know any other medical school that has um, the opportunity to do half day placements like these or full day placements even. Also, there's a spiral curriculum. I prefer this over some other medical schools who do like block teaching where they do maybe like cardiology for like two months and then neurology for another two months. Um, I learn through repetition. So be going back to a certain system like if, if we had um, um, if we learned about peptic ulcer, ulcer disease in September, we would maybe visit another aspect of GI pathology like a month later and things like that. And so that really helped me like remember my body systems, my um, physiology, um, because we kept coming back to it. And this kind of repetition is how I learned. So this was more engaging and better for me. Also, our labs, our anatomy labs and our clinical labs, so we learn our clinical skills are really nice, very up to date, all modern, lovely, all the mod models are um, like, they're, they're all, it's a really nice anatomy and clinical suite. And I hope one day, so what some of you will be able to visit when we're able to have um, actual open days again. Um, also, the staff are lovely at the medical school. They're so engaging. Um, they're really friendly. They're, if we have any sort of problem, they're immediately eager to fix it. Like if we email them saying, oh, something's not working, then they'll email, email us back like that day or they'll hold a cohort meeting and they will talk through the problem. They'll help us fix it. It's it's so friendly. It's one of the reasons why I decided to stay on as well because I've had such a good experience with the staff and 
um, staff during my undergrad and it it's been continued in medicine to be honest also there was the gambian exchange so i'm part of the committee that would so basically in first year we fundraised for to bring um four gambian medical students over for two weeks and then in exchange um we also go over for two weeks so that would have that was going to happen executive unfortunately that's not happening this year but in future years i hope that it will be able to run again and of course it doesn't hurt that we're a top 10 medical school so this is what a typical week in medicine looks like. So swap, swap the Tuesday and the Thursday around for first year and bring the lectures on Monday up to 9 a.m. unfortunately the first year as well. So every week is based on a case. So for example, a few weeks ago we had stroke. So on Monday is anatomy day. So on, in stroke week, the anatomy that we learned was um, about blood supply to the brain and different parts of the brain. On Tuesday we have um, CBL, which is our GP placement. Um, so we have a GP placement every month. So unless you have, unless it's your turn to do it, then that day will be free for you to study or, or take a break. Um, and then on Wednesday, we have more case of the week lectures. So this might be like the management of the disease or the uh, how you would diagnose it, the, cl the clinical signs and symptoms of it. And then Wednesday afternoons are always free so we can do sports. Um, and Thursday is our clinical skills day. This is where we would be in uh, the hospital or in, our, in the clinical skills labs. And this is where we would do things like learning to take histories, learning to examine patients, learning to do small procedures like cannulation, blood taking, um, intubation, all these kinds of things. And Friday is our more ethics -y lectures. Um, so this is where we'd have um, psychology lectures and also where we would wrap up the case so the clinician that presented the case he would um, he or she they would um, have do a forum with us where we could ask them questions they would highlight bits that they think is important that we should know for future practice and also for exams and things like that so what is what's preferable about graduate entry medicine is that I know how to study now because I've done three years of a university degree. When I was when I was 18 coming into university, I didn't really know how to study because um, if you do a, if you if you do A levels, then you know that all you have to do is really keep doing past papers and eventually you kind of get the hang of it. Whereas it's completely different university. You, I think you're required to use more brain power. There's a lot more content as well. So I really learned, really knowing how to study was really important. Um, and I think as a graduate now, because I've done three years of this, um, I know how to study, I know what methods work best for me. So when I, when it came to the revising or studying for after lectures for medicine, I could really just get stuck in and I wasn't too worried about how do I, how, how on earth am I going to remember all this content? Um, and as you can see, there's actually quite a lot of free space. So it's not all nine to five, it's usually nine to one or you do one to five. So don't worry about all, if there's more free space that that timetable makes it look. Um, also, you're already familiar with key concepts because I did a, um, I obviously did a medical science undergraduate degree. I was really familiar with some with um, anatomy because we had a lot of anatomy in first year. I was familiar with physiology, genetics, immunology. Um, immunology plays a big part in what we do in medicine. And uh, because we, I've had so many immunology modules and teaching, this was really, it wasn't like I was learning new things. It was kind of like I was revisited, revisiting it, which really helped me. But that being said, our graduates who come from other non-science degrees, like the arts, like uh, like we have dancers on our course we have chefs on our course all of them also do fantastic because Swansea really tries and helps you so we have these lectures called basic science lectures which are non-compulsory but if you come from a non-science degree I and even if you come from a science degree I think these are great because they help you catch up on scientific content that we that helps you understand like the pathology of the diseases and um, why we manage things in a certain way and things like that so even if you come from a non-science background I think um, graduate entry medicine is still amazing for this um also because we're all now over 21 i think the average year age in our year is 24 25 i think maybe a bit older there is a lot more trust placed in you because you are pretty much the same age um so because a lot of us are obviously the same age as um junior doctors um who have just graduated from medicine so i think there's a lot more trust in us and they are clinicians are more willing to um teach you and like let you take part so i know people who have helped people in my course who were in like october like november were helping in surgeries um just doing minor things so i remember one of my most memorable experiences was i got to um assist in a surgery and by assist i mean dab the blood away from um someone's neck and to me as a first year i was just 
I was amazed that I could even do something like this. So I think that's great. And also early placements, we have a five week placement in first year, and this just keeps on increasing through the years and second, third and fourth year is basically all placements. We have the opportunity to do these half day placements, like I said, and also the fact that we go to the GP from October onwards is fantastic as well. Um, and this is also why I chose Swansea. Um, as Professor Thornton said, we're on the Gower, which is an area of outstanding natural beauty. And this photo was taken, I think on Thursday. And as you can see, it's just stunning. So why wouldn't I come here? But yeah, um, thank you for listening. That's everything. Thank you.